Using a macro in Bee Swarm Simulator has never been more popular, and with lots of new players enjoying the game, I wanted to show you where to find a macro and how to use it correctly. This video is aimed at newer to mid-game players, however, it will definitely help any player who has never used a macro before. Whilst there are other macros out there, today we will be using Natro Macro, which is highly respected in the Bee Swarm community and totally safe to use. You won't have any issues with your account getting into trouble using it on Bee Swarm or from Roblox themselves. It's safe to use. In fact, on it, the developer of Bee Swarm even has a Natro Macro in-game sticker which realistically can only be earned by using a macro as its requirement is being logged in-game for seven days straight. So let's get this macro downloaded and started. There are only two official places that you should be downloading Natro Macro, and they are from the official Discord or from the developer GitHub. Both of these have been linked directly in the description below. Please only ever use these two links to keep you guys safe. Upon first joining the Natro Macro Discord, I believe it will give you a pop-up tutorial, which I recommend completing. Once you have, you'll be able to gain full access to the server, and there's plenty of useful information here. There's lots of useful resources found directly on the Discord, including guides and information, macro help, and plenty of Bee Swarm Simulator chat. So I'd highly recommend joining and taking a click around. However, today we want to go and see where we can actually download Natro Macro on the Discord, and it can be found right here. At the very top of the Discord is a channel called Natro Macro, and when you click it, you will find all of the previous and the most recent macro version. The current latest version as of making this video is version 1.0.1, .1, and if you go directly to the bottom of the blue box, there is a link for a direct download. This is the one that I use. You will get a scare bear pop-up on Discord, which will tell you that this file is potentially dangerous. Do not worry, if you've done everything correctly and gone to the right location, it is totally safe. What it will do is it will download a zip file directly to your computer. If you do not have access to Discord, no problem, you can use the GitHub to download the exact same file. So all you need to do is go to the link in the description below and scroll down to where it says installation and you will see a blue hyperlink which says latest release. Once you click on that, just scroll down a little bit further and in the assets menu at the very top will be Natro Macro and once again this is current version 1.0.1. If you click this, exactly the same, it will download a zip file directly to your computer. Once your file is downloaded, all you need to do is double click and then extract the folder that can be found from within. I like to just personally drag it onto my desktop. There's probably lots of different places that you would like to keep files on your computer, but just for the sake of ease, all I do is just drag the entire folder directly onto the desktop and let it extract. It should do something that looks a little bit like this. Once your files have finished extracting, you will be left with a single folder on your desktop that looks exactly like this. And the only thing you need to do now is double click to get inside and click on the big capital letters that say start. Congratulations, your macro journey is about to begin. So if everything has gone well, you will now see a little gray window pop up on your computer, which says Natural Macro with lots of options to click and tick. So the first thing that I would do is before we set up and play with the macro in any way, let's set up our character properly. Very, very straightforward. In the top menu here, we head to the settings and there's just a few little pieces of information that we can tell the macro to hopefully make the macro a smoother experience when we activate it. On the left hand side here, we can actually tell the macro which hive slot we would like to use. So six is the far left one and then one is the far right one. And we also have uh, a little option here to say how many bees our character currently has. I would recommend adding exactly how many bees you have because every little bit of information will help. Although it is totally fine to macro in a public server, if you do have a private server that you would like to use, now is the time to paste the link here into this middle box. Basically what this will do is that if you are running your macro and your Roblox does get disconnected, the macro itself will attempt to reconnect back into the game and get you set up exactly where you left off. It's a really, really good feature to use. Thirdly here on the right hand side, we have the character movement speed option. All you need to do is type in how fast your character's movement speed is without any haste buffs. And if you don't know how to do that, all you need to do is head to the system cog here in the Bee Swarm Sim window, scroll down about halfway, and then there you will see movement speed and it will give you a number. Mine's 29, yours might be a little bit different, but whatever it is, just type it in that box. Along of course with telling the game what kind of sprinkler type you have, etc. All the information helps. And if you're curious about any features in the macro, there's lots of these little question marks here that you can click on and they will pop up some extra information. 
The core feature and the most important tab, in my opinion, of the macro is the very first one, and this tab is called Gather. In here, you will list a field and or fields that your character defaults to when it's not being told to do anything else in the game. So you can see here that mine says Pine Tree, however, if I click that, it will give me a drop-down menu of every other field in the game, and I can pick and choose exactly what field or fields I want to go and make my character gather in. So let's just give this a go and let's see it in action in its most basic form. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to pick a field completely at random. Uh, let's go with the clover field and we're going to go and pick a pattern for us to actually follow. So let's just for argument's sake click diamonds. Now the thing with the patterns are these are not going to be the best patterns for these fields. I'm still actually learning about those myself. Um, but yeah basically what you want to do is you want to be trying to keep your character in the field without you falling out for as long as physically possible. So ideally, not at all. Uh, this drift compensation here option really, really helps if you click this, but you do need the Supreme Saturator in order for this to work. So I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's go diamonds. Let's go uh, small length with a three width. Uh, we're not going to be collecting for very long. We're just going to try this out, but let's just go 25. Let's have our hive reset by actual reset. And then let's put our sprinkler right in the middle of the field with a distance of three. Now, anything can happen at this point. This might not be a very good pattern for the clover field, but everything is set up. We haven't got any other options set right now. This is purely just clover farming. So when we're ready, all we do is we click F1. Should we give it a go? Okay, so boom! What we have done there is we have just clicked F1 and the first thing that the macro will do is it will reset your character to wherever you are in the map and it will default you back to the hive. And this is where the fun begins. It tends to zoom out and then all of a sudden, da-da, this is completely hands-free gaming here. It's going to work its way to the red cannon, which is my preferred method of choice for travel. And it is going to take us directly into the clover field. It is going to go and put our sprinkler exactly where we left it off. I've just realized it used a, <laughs> a glitter there. <laughs> That's a menu that I forgot to turn off, but ignore that for now. Uh, and you can see here that this is now farming in the diamond pattern in the clover field, doing exactly as we wanted it to do. So yeah, really, really cool, huh? One small word of warning when it comes to anything macros, uh, it is really, really addictive to just sit here and watch it macro for you. <laughs> <laughs> which is really quite a crazy experience. But yeah, it's actually quite relaxing in a weird way. So enjoy that. You can at any point pause your macro and it will literally stop it exactly where it is in its cycle. And then once you restart it, it will continue from where it left off. Or if you click on F3, it will close the macro and stop its run completely. So I would recommend that if you are going to pause the macro, pause it when you're right in the middle of a field and then make sure when you are going to restart it, go back into the same spot and it should be fine. So I think it's about time now to look at the other menus because believe you me, Natural Macro does pretty much everything you can possibly do in Bee Swarm by itself. And it is really, really impressive. You may have noticed there that I actually used a glitter as soon as I went in the field. Uh, that is one of the options to use your hotbar for you. I thought I reset everything back to how it was supposed to be by default, but I guess I missed that, but that's okay. Anyway, second tab here, we have the collect slash kill tab. And just below, you can actually see here, you've got collect. And then on this side here, where it is blue, that is kill. This is two separate menus in one menu. So without getting too overwhelming, uh, these are some of my favorite things. Every time I use a macro, I like to click on the clock. And what this will do is every single hour, it will go to the wealth clock and it will click it for me, which is fantastic for when you're farming overnight because you get the boost, but you also get the tickets. You can actually choose to get a Mondo buff from this. You can choose to collect your ant passes and you can also use it to collect honey storms for you and claim them every four hours. This is excellent for Beesmus. This screen is also brilliant for claiming anything and everything everything around the map that can be hit with a button. For example here, if you really wanted to start hitting your dispensers automatically, you can set your macro to do this. You can do Royal Jelly Glue, Robo Passes, whatever you like. And as well as that, once you've completed your Beesmus quest, which is currently active right now, you can actually go and claim your Beesmus rewards AFK whilst using the macro. So you can do the lid art every eight hours. You can use your gummy beacon. You can check your gingerbread store every two hours. The macro will do it if you click the box. You can use it to do your blender. You can use it to do your memory matches. And if we click on the kill tab here, you can also do it with bug runs and it will also take out bosses for you too. The only thing that I would say, and as a word of warning, I like to keep the macro as simple as possible. And remember, every time you click one of these options, it takes time out of a field gathering in order to do them for you. And it remembers all of the cooldowns and timers for the game. So for example, if I click on Mantis, that's gonna go and find those Mantises and take me out of 
of the field when it believes that they are ready to be killed. Maybe that's what you want to do though. Maybe you really, really want spiders as soon as they spawn. In which case, you can just simply click on allow gather interrupt and that will stop your character from gathering in a field even if your backpack isn't full or your timer hasn't been reached. It will stop you doing what you're doing and it will immediately go to that spider and it will keep doing that every single time a spider spawns. It is hugely customizable. The third tab here is boost. You do have a field boost option, which I haven't particularly played around too much myself, but I do use these hotbar slots, which actually activate items for you when you're in a field. So essentially what you saw just previously is I have my hotbar slot number two, which is glitter, to activate as soon as I go into a field when I'm gathering, and it will do it every 15 minutes to essentially just boost that field a little bit. So you place the item on your hotbar, and then whatever item you place between one and a seven, it will activate. You can set the timer, and you can also on the drop down menu, uh, click on when you want it to activate. I tend to go with while gathering, but there's plenty of options. Yes, you can also do your wind shrine. Yes, you can also add to your sticker stack. It's kind of incredible. But if you're a slightly lower level player and you're still grinding out of those lower level quests, you can also do those with those macros. Uh, essentially, if you really want black bear quests, you can click enable. And what it will do is it will do a black bear quest for you. Uh, you can do the same thing with polar bear. You can do the same thing with Riley B or Bucko B. It will play the game for you when you're AFK. It's quite incredible. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a run here just to kind of show you everything triggering it all at once. But my personal favorite use for a macro is the planters tab. Now, currently you don't see anything, but if you slide this arrow over here, you have the first option, which is for manual. But the green one here is the one that I use, and it's simply for automatic. So this will place and farm planters for you AFK, and it will collect all the nectars and all the items if you want it to do so. So right now here, because I'm a blue hive, I have have the blue setting on, I have it harvesting every two hours, and I have my max plant as three, and then out of all of the list, these are the ones that I have uh, selected. I don't currently have a planter of plenty, and I don't bother with those two, but you can see these are the ones that I'm using, and I've also got the fields here um, for the fields that I want my character to be placing their planters in. Other than that, you do have a status, which essentially shows you your log. Uh, you have a miscellaneous tab with more tools that you can use, including things just like very basic auto clickers, bitter berry auto feeders. It's very, very cool. And then the final page here is a list of the developers and the contributors. All right, so you know what? Let's set this up and let's give this a bit of a go. So let's just click on a few different things and let's just get it started. So maybe let's do pumpkin. Um, let's go and just drop this down a bit because pumpkin's quite a small field. This is what it's defaulted to. I don't know if this is a very good pattern for pumpkin, but I just want to show you guys what happens in action. Uh, what it's going to do is it's always going to go and do the other things first, and then it's going to default to the field when it's finished with the activities. So let's do... Um yeah, let's actually click on the clock and I tell you what, let's also make it go and check on my gingerbread house. Why not? So we've got clock here, we've got gingerbread. Uh, do we need anything here? These, well, technically, let's turn these guys off for now because we don't really need them. Um, so yeah, nothing on this screen for us today. Uh, we're not going to do any quests, but let's do the planters and let's see these in action. So this one is really, really cool. Uh, we've got them on auto and I don't know if my planters are on the map or not. If I already have planters, it's going to harvest them and replant them. So let's give this a go. Oh, actually, you know what? Whilst we're here, <laughs> let's make it go and kill a spider. Why not? Okay, here we go. So as nighttime begins, my character starts to move. And once again, I am not controlling this in any way, shape or form. This is the macro. And uh, so the first thing that I think it's going to do is it's going to go and check on the planters that I currently have on the map. And as you can see here, this one is full. So if all things go to plan, this should actually now empty my hydroponic planter. And then on the next cycle, it should plant another one. I have it to actually collect the items that it drops to. Um, so it will collect those automatically for me. Now that I've spawned back at the hive, it can see that there's nothing else to kind of collect so what it should do now is it should be moving to the second of my three planters remember i selected three planters you can select as many as you like but it should be going to where my second planter is located the macro did actually put it there for me previously i have no idea which field it is but the macro does so thank goodness let's see where it finds itself uh, we are going to, ah, a spider! And we have a nearly full pesticide planter. Even though it's not 100%, I think it's gonna claim it. Because I think that's what I set. <laughs> okay, so third planter should be located in the strawberry field. Um, the macro does remember where it last placed it. Um, so we are going to go and farm that now. I've just realized that I did set spider to kill, but we've just been in the spider field to collect our pesticide planter. So we're not gonna be able to kill a spider, but the macro is still going to go and check, which is good. 
So now that all three of my planters have been claimed, um, what it's going to do now is it's going to replace them in different fields and it's going to replace them based off the settings that I have picked. So right now it is essentially scanning through my item menu to locate the planters to see which ones are available and then it's going to go and put them in certain fields. So if we give it a minute or so, it has scrolled up through my menu and the first one that's come across is the petal planter. So my best guess is it is going to go and put the petal planter somewhere and I think it says there it's going to go and place it in the pineapple field. So it's going to go and do it all itself. It's really, really clever to watch. It's going to go and essentially run itself into a corner. That tends to be where they plant. Um, and yeah, in two seconds here, if we avoid the mantis, there we go. It is going to place it all for me and boom. That's one of three. Uh, yeah, it's gonna do two more. It is now working its way up here into the 35B zone uh, and the heat treated planter I believe is up for number two here. So it's gonna be placing this here in the pepper patch. Essentially the way that I've set it up and the way I like to set it up is so I can have all five of the nectars ready and active at any given time. So yeah, even though some of the ne nectars might be slightly less useful, I like to have all five going, which gives me the best chance uh, when it comes to making pollen. So there we go, number two. And finally, it's picked Tacky Planter and it is heading here to the sunflower field and it's going to go and place it for me as well. So I think Nectars personally are like one of the coolest things about Natural Macro. Really, really good. You get lots of items, lots of boosts, and it will now farm it for me uh, based off the settings that I picked, which is fantastic. We don't need to worry about that now for a couple of hours. They're going to fill up and we're going to go and reap the benefits when they're ready. But now, what's the macro going to do after planters? Hmm wonder what. So it seems now the macro has decided to go and check the spider field, which is going to be a bit of an L because unfortunately we did just take out the spider with our pesticide planter. But as we clicked it, it has gone and done it and it's gone and done it perfect. So it's gone and checked and failed to find a spider because there isn't one there. So it decides, okay, let's go with the next thing that has been set. And that was now to check the wealth clock. Unfortunately, I've not been on for an hour, so I can't claim my first wealth clock, but it will go and check again later when it's available. And then it will go and check again periodically throughout the entire farm so we can get it to a five times wealth clock. It's a really good way to farm tickets overnight. Okay, so now it's done all of the tasks that I've set it to do. It is finally deciding to go to the field that I have picked as the default, and we are now going to be able to start a farm in there. So it's going to last based off our settings, either 10 minutes or until my backpack is 95% complete. And once that is complete, it's going to go and do all the tasks again, provided, of course, the cooldowns have been done. So yeah, this is once again me not playing. This is now um, the macro doing its thing. So of course, I would recommend using this overnight especially in the field which is best suited to your character. For me as a blue, of course, that is the pine tree field. You can get it to do quests, you can get it to do whatever you like, but I personally just like it to gather honey overnight because I do like to do the quest myself. However, if you do have a quest that's crazy difficult and you're really, really struggling to get honey in a field that you're not very good at as a character, well, why not set the macro up, go to sleep, <laughs> and let it gather for you at nighttime. So yeah, you can see here, this is using the corner X snake here in the pumpkin, and it is now gathering for me. Fantastic. Okie dokie. So yeah, now that I'm done with the macro, I have just uh, clicked on stop. And if I don't want it on top of my screen, I can just unclick this one and then it will disappear like so. And then I'm back to playing normal. So yeah, there we have it. This is Natural Macro, just an incredible tool for anyone who likes to play Bee Swarm Simulator. You don't have to use it, but if you want to, uh, then hopefully that will get you set up and started. If you have any questions or concerns or any problems with the macro, on the Discord, they do have a big FAQ and they also have people who will help you directly. So I recommend that that's the best place that you can go. Maybe we'll return with some more professional settings uh, so I can show you sort of some better ways of using the macro because as I do mention again is the more settings that you make it do and the more tasks that you make it do the less time you physically are really going to spend gathering because your character is doing all of the other things for you. So it's really up to how you want to pick and choose how to play with it but just keep that in mind. So that is about it for today's episode here on Natural Macro just showing you the very very basics of how it works. I would like to return at some point to do some more professional settings when it comes to the macro itself. However, this is a really good place to start. And especially if you haven't used it before, best thing to do is just play around with it and see what it does. It's a really, really fun time. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, thanks and see ya.